Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the ever-changing world of technology? Tech It Out can help make some sense of it all. Breaking down geek speak into street speak, technology columnist, author, and TV personality Mark Saltzman covers consumer technology each week for every listener. Mark tackles the latest news, reviews, and how-tos to help you understand what's hot, what's not, and why. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Tech It Out, episode 128. We have a great show planned for you this hour. I just returned from the Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, in Las Vegas. It's the annual show that's all about the latest in tech, with more than 3 million square feet of showroom floor space to wander around. It's massive and obviously exhausting, but very fun, of course. And so today's Tech It Out will be devoted to interviews that look at the highlights from this mecca to Sin City every January. I'll share some highlights of my own, plus we'll talk with tech expert Mario Armstrong about his picks. Weber will chat with us about its Weber Connect for smarter grilling if you like to barbecue. And we'll learn about the Ambassador, which is a real-time language translator. We'll also continue on with the theme next week as well. All right, let's kick things off with today's Tech It Out. So I found as quiet of a place as I could here at the Consumer Electronics Show to chat with you about some highlights from this fascinating look into the future of technology. That's what this show, of course, is all about. Lots to get to. So let's start off with the world's first foldable PC. That's right. It's from Lenovo called the ThinkPad X1 Fold. It's a new form factor that can be used in a lot of different ways, such as unfolded to its full 13-inch size to, say, stream a movie on its gorgeous OLED display or play a game with your fingertips or you can use the Bluetooth mini fold keyboard or active pen to work on documents. When it's bended, you can hold it like a novel to read ebooks or do two things at once. On one side of the screen, you could be watching a video. On the other half, you can be reviewing a presentation or browsing the web. You get the idea. Again, it's called the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold and it'll be out by mid-year. No price announced just yet, but really, really cool. Next up, LG's Z10 8K TV is drawing huge crowds here at its booth. It's LG's next generation flagship OLED TV that has four times the pixels or dots of a 4K TV. So that's more than 33 million pixels instead of 8 million. In, in plain English, it just means unbelievable clarity. And now until 8K becomes the new standard, the TV can upscale other content to near 8K quality. So you could be watching a you know a high definition movie or a, a Blu-ray disc that's 4K and it'll upconvert to near 8K quality. For gamers, this TV offers something called NVIDIA G-Sync technology. So fast and smooth performance. No word yet on when the LG Z10 OLED TV will be out, but I believe it'll be around the summertime. A few smart home tech products caught my eye. Flow by Moen Shutoff is like a security system for your home's water supply. It's a smart valve that identifies problems before they become a headache, like if a pipe bursts or if a child left a tap running, and then it automatically turns off the water supply before notifying you on an app. How cool is that? This Wi-Fi connected device can detect flow rate, temperature, and pressure and Flow by Mo and Shut Off is available now for $4.99. And there are no monthly fees. And home insurance providers may even give you a discount if you have one. There's also a ton of buzz here at CES about Wi-Fi 6. This is the next generation of Wi-Fi that offers up to four times the speed of current Wi-Fi. Plus, it can handle more simultaneous devices and with broader range. I've got here with me the D-Link AX1500 Wi-Fi 6 router, which is also mesh compatible. So that means you can add extenders throughout your home for even broader coverage, and you don't need any additional hardware beyond that. Plus, this D-Link model also has parental controls, so if the kids don't come for dinner when you call them, guess what? You can turn off the Wi-Fi on the app. They'll come pretty quickly. (laughs) And it won't break the bank either, as this D-Link AX1500 will be only $119 when it debuts next month. D-Link will have a full line of Wi-Fi 6 routers in 2020. Finally, tech is changing oral care too. The Philips Sonicare Expert Clean rechargeable toothbrush not only has integrated smart sensors in the handle so it knows how and where you're brushing, but it wirelessly sends that info, a progress report, if you will, to the Sonicare app. Basically, the app helps you see how much you've improved over time by looking at your brushing frequency, duration, and pressure. Philips says that it removes 10 times more plaque and helps you achieve up to 7 times healthier gums compared to a manual toothbrush. I can believe that. Expert Clean is out now and starts at 149. Well, there you have it. A look at some awesome new tech here at the 2020 Consumer Electronics Show. And as I mentioned, there's also a new product for those who like to barbecue or want to be able to grill better. So let's jump into that. 
All right, we're here at CES 2020 at the Weber Connect booth outside uh, on this lovely day. I'm here with Grill Master, Head Grill Master, Kevin Coleman from Weber. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having us. Okay, Weber Connect. You got to tell my listeners what this product can do. Pretty wild. So this will revolutionize grilling. It's actually what I enjoy with it. It's my retirement package. So it's going to turn everybody into a grill master so quickly. We've loaded it full of recipes, techniques. And so basically from the moment that you buy something to the moment it comes off the grill and how to slice it, we have it jammed into there. So it was it is a foolproof system. It will revolutionize grilling because it will teach you and actually help you cook everything to perfection. Okay, so since this is radio, let's explain what it is. I will call it, if I may, a, a smart meat thermometer that does a lot more than that. But it looks like, you know, those kind of probes that you would put inside your meat, and it wirelessly communicates to an app on a nearby smartphone. So maybe walk us through what it can do. I would say this is the smartest meat thermometer that's out there. So it's a hub that works off of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is fantastic. So you can monitor it for wherever you are. Um, it gives you step-by-step instructions. It actually gives you ETA on the food that you're cooking. So it tells you when to flip it, when to take it off the grill, how long it's going to take. We've spent so much time data logging all of this great information to help people cook better. And that's the important part of it is it works off the probe, sends it wirelessly to your phone through the app, gives you all the updates you need. You can do preset stuff. You can actually run programs on it. It's fully functional to almost anybody's developmental level when they're grilling, either beginners that really want to learn how to cook better and people like myself that are advanced that really need something that's going to fine tune and basically keep us where we are and cook food perfectly is loaded into this app. All right. So hypothetically, I buy a 10 ounce filet mignon and I like my steak medium well, medium to medium well. So I can specify that in the app. I put in the probe, shut the grill lid, and then I'm notified on my app when it's time to flip the steak, for example. So what you're going to notify is you go into the app, you actually pick the filet that you're going to be doing. We look at the thickness because thickness will tell us what temperature we're supposed to be cooking at. It will tell you what temperature to cook it at. You pick your doneness, which is going to be your medium well. You're going to put it on the grill. Halfway through, it's going to tell you to flip it. And then the nice thing that we found, which is really cool, this is something I haven't seen, which is one of these things we learned, is carryover temperature. So we know if you want your steak to be medium well, we're probably going to take it off at like 145, and it's going to carry about 15 degrees up to about 155. It still cooks after you take it off. Correct. And we didn't really know what that was, but we found that five-minute window of cooking um, anything direct, which is less than 20 minutes, it's going to be five minutes. It's going to carry 13 to 17 uh, degrees up. And you actually, it'll tell you to take it off at the perfect temperature to get you to medium well, as opposed to them telling you it's medium well and then it overcooks itself. All right. So just to be clear, this doesn't require a Weber grill. If you have one, great. But it can work with really any grill. And with that in mind, it also tells you the grill temperature, which is also different. Because it's not a one-size-fits-all scenario, right? Well, and that's what makes it so versatile is no matter if it's a Weber or if it's not, it gives you an ambient probe that comes with it and a food probe. It actually has four slots so you can monitor four different things. But if you're not using a Weber and you have another grill, it will you can put that clip on the grate and it will actually tell you the temperature of the grill, which is going to make your life easier. And then you put your, your, your probe into your meat, and then all of a sudden you've got the equation for perfection. And it's not just for steak. It can work with poultry, pork, right? So we, we've tested over six to 700 different thicknesses, brisket, chicken, um, vegetables. Yeah, I'm getting so, hungry now. I mean, all right, Kevin, all right. <laughs> we, had a lot of, we had a lot of testing going on. Uh, you know, running a lot keeps that weight off. But, yeah, we've got anything under the sun that you would cook, different cuts of steak, poultry. Poultry, uh, fish, which is one of those things that's hard for people. So we've actually got the temperature, the perfect temperature to cook it at so it doesn't stick. Techniques to help that so it's all loaded in there. No matter what dietary restriction you have, this is going to be able to help you cook your specific food to perfection. Because I'm a carnivore and my wife's vegetarian. Okay, we're good. <laughs> well, you know what? We always want to keep our wives happy. So you can have your perfectly <laughs> you know cooked steak. We can have this. She can have their she, her perfectly cooked vegetables and other things. And we're all one big happy family. <laughs> all right, before we wrap up and talk price, just to clarify, if you're not tech savvy, it's fine. The, the app walks you through everything step by step. You don't need to be super techy to use this. This is this is one of the easiest things to use. If my five and seven year old can use it, almost anybody can use it. And that's what makes it so easy for people is how we've looked at it from not just from a cooking, how to make it easier for you to cook and learn how to cook and cook perfect things, but also how do we make it easily more functional for people where it's not crazy tech. So um, it's basically a device for everybody, which is fantastic. Okay. And it's available now, I understand, and how much does it cost? Retail is going to be $129, um, available now, and $169 in Canada.
Canada, it, you know, it's, it's like our little baby. We've been cooking so much things. I can't wait for people to start cooking with this and actually start cooking better than us. So that gives us an idea of like, oh, maybe it's time for us to retire. So it's a fantastic product. Um, we've put so much time and effort into it. And I just can't wait to have people that have a hard time grilling find way more success and have way more enjoyment in their backyards. All right. So it's called Weber Connect. And the website is simply Weber.com. Go to Weber.com or if you're in Canada, Weber.ca. Um, you'll find it there. Kevin, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your CES. It smells amazing out here. I can see why you wouldn't want to leave. <laughs> thank you so much. We're just happy to be here at CES and uh, look forward to all the great things that we're going to learn. Speaking of food, believe it or not, CES had Beyond Pork there. I didn't try it, but people were telling me, oh, you got to check it out. It's in this hall, you know, this booth in this hall. But I never got there. But uh, I don't know. I'm not really into all this fake fake, uh, you know, faux meat, but uh, I don't know why they were at CES, but they were there. All right. This show, Tech It Out, is powered by Asus, and they did, by the way, have a great show. We're going to chat with them next weekend about CES. Asus creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, including its line of award-winning laptops, desktops, monitors, smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash US slash Radio for more info. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. When we return on Tech It Out, we're going to talk with Mario Armstrong, digital lifestyle expert who you see on TV all the time, about his top picks of the show. Stay with us. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. Find the Tech It Out podcast at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Tech It Out. The hottest consumer electronics and technology being unveiled here at CES 2020 in Las Vegas this week. And here on the showroom floor, I caught up with digital lifestyle expert Mario Armstrong, who's right in the middle of it all to give us a sneak peek at some of the exciting products heading our way. Good to see you, Mario. Good to see you too, Mark. It's good to be here, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, pleasure. All right, let's dive right in. What's new in the world of laptops at CES? Uh, You know, there's a lot that's going on. I saw some foldable screens on some cool things. Uh, Dell's got some foldable displays that I thought was awesome. There's also the Dell XPS 13. Oh, I've been one paying, of my favorites. Yeah. I've been paying attention to that, uh, especially since last year, but now it's got a new modern design. Uh, it's got even a, a smaller screen size with it, too, that's really, really well. The XPS 13 uh, is really great. It's got that edge-to-edge keyboard, which I love, and then that infinity edge display, so when you're watching your favorite shows or movies, you can really just take in the screen experience and not have to worry about the border mm-hmm. around it, but it also is fully packed with power. It's got the latest Intel processors, great battery life on it, by the way, and it's super lightweight, which is one of my favorite features about it, because you can just drop it in that bag or purse and take it with yeah. you on the go and get work done. And going back to battery life, that's one of the most underrated features, in it my is. opinion, as a frequent traveler, you know. Yeah, it, no, it I know, great. you get around a lot, so you know how critically important it is for our devices. Like, it's the Achilles heel of our devices. Yeah, if you don't have power, they can't work. And the Dell XPS 13, that's that's the model number they're sticking with, the same name, but there's yeah. a new, new flavor for New flavor for it, that's exactly okay. right, yeah. New design, new modern design, uh, it's, you get a lot more inside uh, the same shell. When's it coming out? Uh, it's out in 2020. Oh, okay. I mean, it's like the yeah, first quarter. Okay, yeah. okay, soon. All right. Next up, smart home tech is booming, of course. Yes. What are some of the trends that you're seeing? Uh, so many things. I mean, I've seen uh, pet robots in the smart home. Um, you got a lot of things happening with voice, obviously, with Amazon and uh, uh, with Alexa and, and Google and such. Um, and I'm also seeing things like Sleep Number is here. Like, you know, that, that's a smart bed company. People are like, but they do better. But it's like they're bigger than betting. They really are thinking about your health and wellness Mm -hmm. and how you can use technology to get better insights to how well you're sleeping or not. So they're showing off their 360 smart beds here and some of the technology. Like they now have these microclimates, which is really a way, like say you and your partner are in your bed and you both sleep better at different temperature levels. Mm -hmm. It can adjust automatically for you to help you fall asleep and stay there better. So it's smart things like that. It's not just firmness anymore. No. That's right. Yeah, it's not just firmness. They have sensors built into the beds with their sleep IQ technology. So on your phone, you can actually see how many hours am I sleeping? What's my heart rate like? Like what? How? What's the quality of the rest that I'm getting? So that's in the bedroom. In the kitchen, I love what Moen is doing with the U uh, smart faucet that they have. That's Mm. incredible. Like this is like last year. I think they came out, or maybe two years ago, with the hands-free faucet, where you just wave your hand. Restaurants and stuff. But that's right. That's right. Now in the house. (laughs) But now in the house, it's a really great way. You just wave your hand over 
over the sensor and it runs the water. But now they're talking about giving you precise amounts of water uh, at specific temperatures, and you can talk to it. So you could actually say, uh, you know, give me uh, a, a gallon of water at 75 degrees, and it will do that exactly. So wow, pretty awesome. That's pretty wild. And then um, that is available now, or is that coming in 2020? That's in, in 2020. Okay, and what that's called? You buy Moen. Yep, you buy Moen Smart Faucet. Okay, which is really. And cool. what's Train all about? Yeah, the Train XL824 Train is here because they're showing their smart thermostats, and as we know, like that's a big part of the smart home. And the big question is, does it work with my existing HVAC? Can it work with my system at home? And so Train has really been working well because they're they are compatible with most HVAC systems. Mm-hmm. But really, what it gives you, the consumers, the power to not only manage your in-home temperature, but also the energy that you're spending. If you're not going to be at home, you can control it from your right. device when you're away, which is better on your wallet and the environment. Oh my God! And I love the fact that they're using cloud technology to actually learn your preferences. So ha- as you start to use it, it starts to learn you, mm-hmm. and it can start to make those adjustments to save you money and to keep the environment still comfortable. For all of these products, Mario, where can we learn more or even see you in action? Yeah, uh, bestofces.com is the website where we have that plus other stuff that we're doing. And then I would say uh, follow me on Instagram because I'm going around live and I would love to to talk to your uh, listeners uh, through DM if they have questions or they want me to show them something. So follow me at Mario Armstrong on Instagram. Well, good to see you as always. And I think we're going to catch up again at some point on the showroom floor to hear some other products. I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm looking forward to that too. And it's always good to see you because I know when I see you that I know that I'm in the happen in space because you're always where a lot of technology and things are always on the cutting edge and keeping us up to date so it's a pleasure and an honor to be here too kind see you soon all right man talk soon all right now as i mentioned i will be catching up with mario again after this short break with a few other picks including some more smart home tech which is a really a big trend at this year's show i had a few people write me asking about automotive tech there was some really neat technology bmw had self-driving car demos once again nissan was there showing their next generation Aria, which is a an electric car with two motors, front and back, for really fast pickup and up to 300 miles of, of range. Mercedes-Benz unveiled the Vision AVTR with legendary director James Cameron from the Avatar films with a sustainable story. They say that they're going to use plastics collected from the ocean to help make the faux leather inside the vehicle. How interesting is that? And the car itself, when this comes out in the future, because it is a two-seater autonomous or fully self-driving prototype. The car itself is said to be 95% recyclable, including the electric battery, which is really interesting. So Mercedes had that. And then finally, Hyundai had a concept flying car with Uber showing the future of air taxi services. Perhaps it's called the S. Dash A1, and this did not fly over Vegas, even though that would have been really cool. But instead, it did look like a giant quadcopter, a giant drone that you could sit in. And they did show like the how the propellers move and all that, but you couldn't actually go in it, which is too bad. But not, very cool nonetheless. So that was in the North Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center. Certainly a really great time. You're listening to our special CES or Consumer Electronics Show coverage from the 2020 CES, which just wrapped up in Las Vegas. When we return on the program, we are going to revisit with Mario Armstrong for him to share with us a few other high-tech goodies that he found at the show. We'll be right back. Want to follow Mark? Google him. Mark with a C and Saltzman with a Z. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. This is Tech It Out. Tech It Out with technology columnist, author, and TV personality, Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, everyone. We're continuing our coverage of the 2020 Consumer Electronics Show. Once again, I caught up with Mario Armstrong, technology lifestyle expert. The last interview we did earlier in this program, it was in person, but now I caught up with him on the phone because we've been so busy that uh, we can't even connect in person, but we're still at the CES Tech Convention here in Vegas. Thanks for your time, Mario. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, it's, it's tough. It's tough, people. I mean, it's 3 million square feet of space. And as you know, Mark, you know, when you do this thing, you know, you can't see everything at all, even in the four days that's available to you. So it really is a massive thing. But and you're on your feet the entire time. You're walking around, you're meeting people, you're you're, you're constantly up. But it's good. I mean, the the vibe is that there is a lot of activity, a lot of innovation. People are really trying new products, new things to get out there to the marketplace. And, you know, I saw a few of those things, some some of the things that were kind of common, like your TVs. Uh, so I'll talk about that. I also saw some things like uh 
you know, in other areas that were pretty cool. Yeah, so why don't we start with TVs? I know I, the question that I always get from my friends are like, okay, how big now and how thin are they getting and what kind of resolution? <laughs> so right. give us the skinny right. on what's new in TVs. Yeah, well, I swung by the LG booth. I mean, obviously, I went and looked at a lot of the different companies, but everyone, the LG booth is pretty massive every year anyway. But this year, there were just so many people. It was hard to even walk through, and everyone was looking at everything from their rollable screens to more. Um, and then they announced that they had the GX Gallery OLED 4K TV. Now, this particular OLED TV has over a billion rich, accurate colors. It's got an incredible picture quality. Saw this in person. Really looks unlike anything I've seen before. And it also has voice services built in, which is great. It doesn't have just one. It has both. So it has Google Assistant and Alexa both built in. It also supports AirPlay 2, which is awesome. And then if you have gamers in the family, they're going to love the fact that it has compatibility with NVIDIA G-Sync technology because that's going to really give a better, smoother gaming experience. You won't have that flickering or, or tearing on the screen through those action moments. And I know right now it's like the, the best time to be talking about screens because it's football season too. So that's a big day or a big event when people start thinking about buying. So if you are in the market, make sure you go to LG.com because they're also going to give you a year free of Disney Plus if you if you uh, end up buying a TV. Oh, that's cool. That. That's cool. And I did really like their booth yeah, a lot. Okay. Yeah, they had some awesome uh, TVs, uh, some even eight. 8K, so four times the resolution of That's 4K. right. Yeah, yeah, 8K is like a big thing. Yeah, and this one too had on its frame, even though it has a border around the edges, you could change you could change the frame of what it looked like. So there were times where there would be like pictures of art that would be on the screen, but it would be framed and, and you would just say, oh my gosh, and you could change the frame to whatever design you wanted. It was really kind of cool. Wow, okay, very cool. So that's from LG and it's the GX 4K OLED? Yeah, the GX Gallery OLED. Okay, yeah. and when's that coming out? And any word on how much, dare I ask? Uh, so they don't have the – well, no, it's good to ask. They don't have the pricing yet. They told me, hey, if people ask you, you know, check the website consistently. Like They're going to have updates for that soon. So we don't have the price on that. And yet. they may w- not want to sh- show their hand, right, to competitors who have uh, yeah. a TV, right? They, <laughs> they, right. they want to wait. I get that. All right, another big – so right. along with TVs, another big category here, especially over the last couple of years at CES, is car tech, automotive technology, dominating most of the North Hall. Tell us what's uh, hot in car tech. Yeah, I mean uh, – past couple of years, it really just took off over there. And I remember talking about uh, sync technology in your vehicles a long time ago. And Ford really had a lot of activity going on at the booth because they announced a brand new um, addition, I should say, an expansion to their Mustang lineup. This one turns me out because they are announcing an all-electric Mustang. But this isn't your regular Mustang that you immediately think of. This is the Mustang Mach-E SUV. So they have an all-electric SUV now in their line. And this gets about an estimated EPA estimated range of about 300 miles on that charge. But you also get access to the Ford Pass charging network, which has over 12,500 public charging stations so you can charge up. But the inside of the vehicle was also cool because they made some additions and enhancements to their sync communications and entertainment system. So this system is really smart. It learns your preferences over time. One of the things that caught my attention was like, how it's how it would know things that I do often. So let's say I get into the car and I call my mom every time I'm on my morning commute to work. It would know that and it would prompt me in advance and say, hey, you want to call mom? Or maybe I listen to a favorite podcast all the time. So it would automatically tune to that podcast or prompt me if I want to tune to that podcast. So I thought that that was really kind of cool to see some of those preferences being learned about how I, how I use the car. And you can have multiple profiles. So if that car is shared with other family members, when you get Get in, you touch your profile name, all your apps come right up on the screen that are that you're used to seeing. Everything's kind of customized. But if another driver jumps in, they can just click a button and it's on and changing to their preferences as well. Um, the other thing that was really cool too is that the Mach E also delivers secure over the air updates to enhance vehicle performance, but also offer those maintenance updates that many of us forget about and uh, a lot more through that too. So that was exciting to see. All right. So that's the Mach E from Ford. It's the new Mustang that's all electric and those other bells and whistles that you shared with us. Do they have a a street date for that? Yeah, um, it's out. I mean, they're like pushing this thing out now. It starts around 44,000. Um, but you can get – don't if you are in the market for anything electric, by the way, make sure that you're checking the federal rebates for electric vehicles. Uh, if you're going to do a Ford thing, go to Ford.com and check what they have. But just make sure you check for those rebates. Not to mention you won't have to buy gas ever again. So 
No, you won't. No, you won't. We're chatting on the line with digital lifestyle expert Mario Armstrong. This show is so big that we're actually at the same convention, but we just couldn't find the time to actually connect to do this interview, this second of two interviews from CES in person. So thanks for being available, Mario. And I I tried to find as quiet of a spot as I could, and I know you did too. Thank you again, Mario. Mario Armstrong has been our guest. I always love catching up with you at CES every year. Have a great rest of your show and all the best for 2020. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Looking forward to seeing you too, Mark. And I'm amazed how your voice is held up. Mine is barely holding up. <laughs> you are doing a ton of interviews out there, and your voice still sounds great. <laughs> Thank you so much. And with that in mind, I'll plug the best website for people to learn more about what you've been chatting about, and that's bestofces.com. Mario, again, thanks, man. We'll see you soon. Have a great new year. Talk to you soon. Before we take a short break, I'll share with you a quirky gadget that you may have heard about at the Consumer Electronics Show. It's from Charmin, of all companies, and it's called the Rollbot. That's R-O-L-L-B-O-T, by the way. And as the name suggests, if you find yourself on the toilet without anybody leaving you any toilet paper in the house, come on, it's happened to everybody at some point, you can summon this robot to bring you a roll. And uh, yeah, that's assuming you bring your smartphone to the bathroom. I'm sure some of you do. You simply open the app, you tap it, and a cute little robot on wheels will bring you to your location, or really the phone's location, a roll of toilet paper. (laughs) Hey, I said it was silly, right? No word yet on if and when it'll come out, but it was being demonstrated last week. But when we return, we're going to hear a bit more of a practical gadget called the Ambassador that does some really interesting language conversion. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Tech it out. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. Check it out. Hosted by Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, which is powered by Asus. Asus creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, including its line of award-winning laptops, desktops, monitors, smartphones, smart watches, tablets, and much more, including a gaming division called ROG, or Republic of Gamers. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. Well, congratulations to Sergio Del Rio from Waverly Labs. You won Last Gadget Stand the coveted annual gadget contest. It's a pitch competition. Fantastic job today. Tell us about uh, the product that won Last Gadget Standing. Oh, thanks a lot, Mark. Yeah, I was super nervous. I wasn't expecting this. It's it was super a great exciting. presentation. You were, I, you were great. Uh, basically, what we have is called the Ambassador. What it, what it allows you to do, or the, the pain it solves, is that you can communicate with this device in 20 different languages and 42 different dialects, right? So let's say you want to speak uh, French from Canada and translate to Peruvian Spanish, right? You set it up in the device. You can wear one device and share other devices with other people. You can have up to three people at the same time, uh, up to four people at the same time in the same conversation. And you can go back and forth, back and forth. So I'm holding it right now. It goes over your ear. It's like a small little, looks like a Bluetooth headset, maybe a little bit bigger and, and rounder. But the idea is that this wirelessly communicates to a smartphone, right? Like an app. Is that right? Right. Uh, in order to take the language that you're speaking, upload it to your cloud, so to an internet uh, server, and then it brings back down the real-time translation in your mother tongue. Is that about right? Yeah, correct. And we do that uh, with really a very cool looking, by the way. Oh, thank you. We, w- we wanted to do it as, as fast as possible because that's how you naturally communicate, right? So yeah, even we'll do a demo in a moment. So um, yeah, for sure. Uh, so it's very accurate, even in loud environments, right? Because it's only capturing so- sound from around your mouth. So not only is this a little speaker for your ear, because it does clip over your ear, but it also has a microphone to hear your voice too, correct? It has two microphones, yes. Okay. And it's, you know, capturing as clear as possible. And then talk to us about about some of the applications on stage, I think you said there was three different scenarios that you can use this. Right, you can do uh, the first scenario is listen. You can go attend a conference, attend a class, sit down, and everything they're saying in French, you'll hear it in English in your ears. Right. Uh, the second case, it's lecture. You can put it on, and you can give a talk, uh, conference, pretty much like what I did over there in stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can just be talking and talking and talking. Let's say they invite you to give a conference in Turkey. Uh, whatever you say in, in English will be translated into the speaker sound of the auditorium in Turkish. 
And the final uh, mode, Converse, allows you to, to have a, a dialogue between four people. Each of them could be speaking a different language. And whatever I say, for example, in Spanish, will come out in French, in Italian, in Chinese at the same time. Amazing. So just like we're doing now. So you have a conversation. Let's say you have a business meeting in Beijing mm -hmm. or uh, whatever. And uh, I don't speak uh, a lick of Chinese, <laughs> uh, like Mandarin or Cantonese. Then I can hear it in English in real time in a more intimate one-on-one uh, -on -one or up to four uh, people environment. That kind of thing. Yeah, correct. Correct. Okay, wow. Uh, without further ado, I would love a demo of yeah. this. And then we'll talk when it's available and how much. I think when you said the price, the audience was pleasantly surprised yes. because it sounds very affordable. We'll get to that in a moment. And it's out in March, right, as you're getting this set up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We just finished a pilot production. Uh, we're just receiving the components, starting the mass production, and start you know, shipping. We, we did want to make it affordable, because at the end, if we want to destroy the language barriers, mm -hmm. it has to be for everybody. One ninety nine, by the way, as you're getting this set up, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And once you buy it, you don't have to pay membership. One-time fee. fee. One-time fee, yeah. Very reasonable. I'm chatting with Sergio Del Rio. He yes. is getting ready to give, me, give us a real-time demo of the Waverly Labs Ambassador, it's called? Yeah, it's called Ambassador. Okay. So you're just opening up an app. You're choosing a language. Right. So show I'm us gonna, what you're doing. I'm going to choose Mexican Spanish because that's my, my favorite type <laughs> of Spanish. Okay. And uh, uh, I don't speak Spanish, so this is going to... Okay. So I've got this little device with me. Right. Uh, so am I? Get, we're going to hear in English what you're saying? What I'm going to do for the sake of the radio interview, I'm going to play the, the lecture mode. So You'll it's pretty much as if it was a, a conference, right? Sure. And the sound will come out from here and you'll be able to record okay. it in your speaker. Great. Right. So let's do it. All right. La, la intención de este dispositivo es que tú puedas hablar normalmente como si estuvieras hablando con un amigo que no te tengas que preocupar por hablar despacio o hablar de manera más pausada. La intención es que tú hables como si supieras el idioma. And I also noticed you were talking fast, so let's see if it works. The intention of this device is that you can speak normally as if you were talking to a friend who does not have to worry about speaking slowly or speaking more slowly. The intention is that you speak as if you know the language. Wow, that is pretty cool. So I know there are apps that can do something like that, like Google Translate, for example, but it is cumbersome to pull out the app. This clips over your ears. Is that one of the reasons why someone may opt for the ambassador, or are there other advantages? Yeah, there are many advantages. One, uh, it, the first is the speed, right? Because you're compressing the audio a lot, and we're sending it as soon as you can to the to the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is like it allows you to convert with four people. With Google Translate, you have two people, and you have to be throwing the, the phone back and forth right. for, you know, in the meeting room. Yeah. And you're limited to the size of the phone to the speaker of the phone right I've, if you have ever tried to have a meeting with Google uh, Translate using your phone you know it's a horrible experience right? mm. um, the other thing that you can that we allow you to do is to give a conference and attend a conference that you really could be you couldn't be using Google phone sit down with your phone and try to translate whatever is happening in the conference in uh, a big room it won't work in, in, but if the person who's speaking has one of these devices over their ear then it would work very clearly right yeah 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 like you the thing is like this gives you more power to project your voice, you know. Amazing. Yeah. And then uh, finally, speaking of Google, I know they also had demonstrated, uh, I think two years ago now, they have the, their, their buds, their mm -hmm. Pixel buds, the, a similar demo, and then only later to be revealed that it was a little bit smoke and mirrors. It doesn't really work as advertised. How does your product compare to what Google is doing with their Pixel buds? Right. I mean, I think Google is a fantastic company. I'm, I'm still waiting for them to come out with like a good solution, like intended to be focused in the, in the user experience, right? It feels for me that that I was like more like a marketing push. Like we have to have something in the market yeah, now, yeah. you know. Um, but they have they have the capabilities. Okay. Yeah, you know? I think it's very important to put the user in the core of your development, and not only do technology for the sake of technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. That was fantastic, Sergio. So it's called the Ambassador. The company is Waverly Labs. It's available in March for one ninety nine. And what's the best website to learn more? Uh, WaverlyLabs.com. WaverlyLabs.com. Thank you so much. Gracias. Merci. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna. I'll stop it right there. Uh, thanks again. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Follow Mark Saltzman on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Listen to Check It Out whenever you want. We are continuing our coverage of the 2020 Consumer Electronics Show, or CES for short. I just returned from this massive show with more than 4,400 exhibitors covering over 3 million square feet of showroom floor space at the Las Vegas Convention Center and surrounding areas, including the Sands Expo and the Venetian and Planet Hollywood and the Trump Hotel and the MGM. Like, I mean, there are suites and then there was the big halls. So really uh, an overwhelming show, but a lot of... 
a lot of cool stuff. So this hour, we've looked at new computers and smart home tech, giant TVs, and some talk about cute robots. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. We're going to learn about another computer in a moment. So yeah, I thought for this last block, I would just share a few more highlights. And then next week, we're going to continue on with the theme. We're going to learn about this really interesting product called the MedWand, which is a medical device that's designed for telemedicine for a physician to virtually visit you. Maybe you're, you're sick at home in bed. This one device that you have has something like 10 or 11 sensors that uh, can help a physician, a doctor, diagnose you accurately. Pretty neat stuff. FDA approved. They're uh, waiting for a few other sort of uh, check marks, and then they're going to release that later this year, but really neat. So we're going to learn about that next weekend. But let me share a few more highlights from CES. There was a lot of buzz about the first Galaxy Chromebook with an AMOLED display. So this is from Samsung, and the, an AMOLED is the similar screen that you'll see on their smartphones and tablets, like absolutely gorgeous screens and with this chromebook it has 4k resolution so four times the the dots or pixels of an hd picture in other words it offers a stunning visual experience in a laptop with better color contrast and brightness and a very thin bezel like there's no border really between the screen and the and the body of the laptop there's nothing between you and your content in other words it's also a convertible 13 inch laptop that doubles as a tablet and it includes a pen for those who like to write or draw there are dual cameras on this device the latest gigabit wi-fi 6 wireless speeds as i talked about earlier in the program and i do like that lean chrome operating system because it's really fast and secure and supports many apps this samsung galaxy chromebook is available in mercury gray or siesta red and it's available now starting at 9.99 gamers had a lot to be excited about last week at ces there's no shortage of accessories i liked one called the wd black p50 game drive SSD. This is a solid state drive for computers and consoles designed to balance speed and performance with huge storage capabilities and durability. So it looks like a tiny little deck of cards, actually a lot thinner than that, but that's kind of the idea. And then you plug it into your console or your PC to boost your system's overall responsiveness or to reduce load times. But it's so fast that you can actually run games off the drive itself. So it's got what's called a super speed USB 3.0 interface. In plain English, it's really, really fast, 20 gigs per second. And this drive is compatible with existing and future hardware and components and accessories. So there's a lot of buzz about this WD or West Western Digital Black P50 drive and up to two terabytes of storage, which is great. So great for gamers and content creators, YouTubers, and anyone who needs like a, a drive to store all their files. And finally, how about a unique drone? Power Vision hatched its Power Egg X at the CES show. It's an egg-shaped gadget that allegedly took more than 300 engineers more than three years to create. So what is it? It's maybe best described as a 4K camcorder and drone hybrid. Bread. So on one hand, yes, as a camcorder, you kind of hold it like a football. As I said, it looks like an egg. So you kind of hold it like a football and you can shoot 60 frames per second 4K video for up to three and a half hours between charges. And it also synchronizes with a smartphone app for easy editing and uploading. Then if you, the second way you could use it, you could put it down on a tabletop stand and it'll follow you around a room. So it's got this like desktop mode where you may be live streaming over YouTube and you want the camera to automatically follow you as you walk around your home. Maybe you're chatting about I don't know, cooking or you're giving a tutorial on something, yoga, and it's following you around. And then third, it's an autonomous drone. So it can fly by itself and avoid obstacles and all that. And it's on a three axis gimbal. So nice and smooth video. And it'll even follow a subject. Like let's say your kid is playing soccer. You can have this drone lock onto your subject, onto your uh, child, and it'll only capture their moves on the, on the pitch, on the field. Really cool. Up to 30 minutes. It even works in the rain as you get a waterproof case and other accessories. Power Egg X is available now for $8.99. And again, it's from a company called Power Vision. So as you can see from this past hour, this entire Tech It Out show was devoted to the CES show, Consumer Electronics Show. Really a lot of fun last week in Vegas. Exhausting, but uh, I'm 
glad to be back and I'm excited to share what I found there because it's only open to uh, folks in the industry. Next weekend, we'll continue talking about CES as well. This program, Tech It Out, is brought to you by Asus. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info on all of their products, including their ROG or Republic of Gamers line of gear as well. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Catch up with you next time on Tech It Out. Mm-hmm.